Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Eden Zero chapters 218 and 219. When we lost with our heroes, everyone was sort of recovering from everything that happened on Landard. Um, the, both Arasio and Saces are pretty much gone. The Galactica, everyone is dead except for Shiki at this point. Uh, the Interstellar are half dead and no longer have a Galactica to pursue. So they're all kind of wondering what they're going to do. We especially see Holy uh, get some context on that immaculate military operation or whatever that it was just seducing Shiki. So, okay, that's a thing that we now know. Um, and then Rebecca finds out about her, her father, about Connor being her father. We have to deal with, and she sort of has to deal with that. In a very similar way, we learn that Connor dealt with, um, that Connor dealt with learning Rebecca was his daughter. Um, and then a bit of like, you know, fun in the bath with the girls sort of dealing, Rebecca sort of vocalizing all these frustrations about this newfound parent in her life. Um, and Homer on morning Elsie segues into the revelation that Shiki is lying to the, to what's left of Elsie's crew about what happened to Elsie, telling her, telling the crew that she's just MIA. No one quite knows where she is. Even Clown, who is still alive, is like, just tell them the truth. But before we can really explore that or get more info out of Clown over the whole Eden's one thing, Sister reports that Rachel has woken up. And that's where we leave off. So let's dive right on in into chapter 218, Saint Fire. And our picture here is just like Shiki in like a workout room doing some stretches. Real simple thing. Um... But we open with Rebecca apparently running straight from the bath. All she has on is like a towel to cover herself uh, as she runs through the corridor. Mom, she abandoned her husband and daughter and became the founder of some freaky church. And she's one of the Erosion Seis Galactica. Right, it's not just Shiki who's the only survivor of the Galactica. I forgot that Rachel was still around. Or that Rachel was a Galactica. Uh, and she sort of pauses realizing like the weight of all this. Maybe I should be scared. Uh, and she stops, she like, you know, as she's sort of coming to a, coming to a stop, uh, she's right outside the medical room where Connor also meets her. Uh, and Rebecca very like pointedly, you know, tugs her, her towel a little closer, uh, which was the, the big part of the, of the previous chapter I found kind of uncomfortable. The whole, he watches her kind of horny videos. Um, but you know, anyway, the door of the medical room opens uh, and Rachel has, okay, it's gonna be another fucking BDSM character. Because <laughs> Rachel is tied up sister. And maybe this is really is meant to be, she assumes sister's an enemy and that won't be like a gimmick of her character. But the fact that it's happening, like, it definitely is part of the gag for sister, that sister the dominatrix is now in the, in the submissive role. Um, and so I'm still uncomfortable with it, as Sister calls out, what do you think you're doing? Ow, 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 ow. Uh, and Connor and Rebecca are just, like, stunned at, at seeing this display. Um, and, oh, it's, it's the, the, the little thing that, that Rebecca says. I had forgotten about that little verbal quirk. We hadn't heard it in a long time. What do you think you're doing, ducky? What am I doing in this crazy place? Because, yeah, Rebecca has that weird, like, ducky end on her sentences sometimes to insult people. I guess she picked that up from her mom at a very young age. Uh, and Connor calls out, R Rachel, stop! And Rachel acknowledges him and slowly realizes who it is. Connor? And then she knows Rebecca. For the first time in, you know, probably close to, to 20 years. And is that... Uh, and then, you know, there's a bit of a, everyone sort of calms down, sister is freed, and is able to, to start explaining what happened. The second she woke up, she started attacking me, and quick enough to put Rebecca's speed to shame, too. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. See, the last thing I remember is Ziggy attacking the church. You can't blame me for thinking I was captured by Ziggy. Uh, okay, so that's... Okay, okay, so she, so it's not that Ziggy found her. With the other mothers, Ziggy found them or, like, kidnapped their corpses. But there was an attack, a full-on, you know, I guess, full frontal assault by Ziggy. 
uh, or by the Edens one or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Uh, but Happy just tells her, well, you were, so... Uh, and then they, we just move on as Rebecca just stares her mother down. Uh, and Rachel, like, acknowledges her. Look at how you've grown, Rebecca. And Rebecca pushes back, not really allowing this. Of course. Now you start talking like a mother. As if you didn't abandon me. And Rachel takes that. That's fair. Uh, and Connor, Connor interrupts here. I never knew where you came from. I didn't know the, Saint, the Church of Saint Fire were your family. Do they have anything, do they have anything to do with what happened? Uh, and Rachel tries to sort of dither here. Anything I say will sound like an excuse. Uh, but Rebecca, Rebecca stops that. I still have a right to hear it. Tell me everything. And Rachel is just uncomfortable, but finally starts to speak. Mm. I wouldn't know where to start. Maybe I should start by telling you where I came from. I'm from Milt in the Yukino Cosmos. There's been a church there for ages, the Church of Saint Fire. That church is my ancestral home. So once again, it is looking like we're, we're you know, more and more parts of the story referring to the Yukino Cosmos. We might be heading there very soon. We might sp have more things to do in Kaide, given that we spent very little time in Kaide, all told. Just like the one, the one, to be fair, fairly large arc in Kaide. Um, so there might be more time in Kaide, but also Yukino is definitely on the horizon. Uh, that church is my ancestral home. For generations, members of my family have been required to act as the founder of that church. I was trained from a young role, from a young age to take the role myself. Okay, the use of founder there is interesting. Because she was, because when we were first told about Knox, we were told that she was the, oh, sorry, that she was the founder uh, of, of the St. Fire Church. But it seems here that founder is just a title passed down from head to head, uh, which is interesting. It feels a little bit of a, uh, like, it feels kind of like a, you know, okay, sure. It, it feels like, you know, Majima now doesn't want Nox to be the origin of the, so like, to give her this, to give Rachel this kind of backstory of, of coming from a long line to line of, of this church. And so he's just sort of making that as, as the retcon, it feels to me, but whatever. It, it still works. I'm just, I'm just belly aching. Um, and, and sister questions, the church of Saint Fire, they put their faith in time, right? Well, in a nutshell, sure. It ain't wrong to look at it that way. Also, here's something I, I haven't quite noted, I haven't quite called out, but I did notice it a, little, a page or two ago, is the very kind of folksy way that she talks. Like the way this, like, like the, the localizers, when writing her, her language, much like they do with, say, Ellie and Chojin X, have given her this kind of Southern American English vibe. You know, the way, where's the line? Uh, I should start by telling without the G, uh, which is like, it's, it's the way that I talk, so I never really notice it because I am Southern. Um, but it definitely is part of it. It ain't wrong to look at it that way. That's, you know, I sort of had this image of her in my head as being kind of proper, this sort of, you know, religious leader, but she's, there's a country element to her too. Um, they say that for generations, the women in our family have had the power to control time. You know what I'm talking about, Rebecca? Again, that's a very, very folksy speech pattern. Uh, but though also that does really fit in with what we know about Rebecca, that this is, that's something that that's, you know, a power she's had in the beginning, especially once Cat Leaper really started to activate on the Billy Al Gore. Um, and we're getting some, some context for it, which may also tie into her status as the or the alternate timeline her as Ethereon. Mm. But Rebecca tells her, keep talking. I hated being stuck in a family like that. So I ran away from home. I was at that age, you know? On Sister Questions, you ran away? I went all the way to the Aoi Cosmos, where I fell in love with Connor. He was a lieutenant commander in the Freedom Force then. Uh, and Happy Questions, what? Didn't you say you were a captain? Uh, which, oh, given Connor's line is is above Lieutenant Commander, I would have taken, I would have, like, Commander sounds more impressive than Captain, and Lieutenant Commander sounds a step below Commander, but I guess not. As Connor tells Happy, this be before I were promoted. Uh, and Rachel goes on, the three years I spent with Connor were the best years of my life. 
It was a happy time when I could forget my old life. Uh, I mean, and Connor presses her, but you left me on the day our daughter was born. You left without a word. And Rachel, you know, sort of acknowledges that, uh, that pain, and finally tells him, the Church of St. Fire found me. Uh, and sister questions, and they took you and your daughter away by force, is that it? Not exactly, but close enough. And Happy Press is not exactly. At first, I just did what they wanted. But then, they killed Connor. Okay. The different universes. Connor, more than almost any other character, is so different in each universe. Could she be from an earlier universe? I mean, if, if we accept the naming conventions of the, of the universes so far, the series we started in was one, and then the Aoi War was in two, and now we're in three, that would mean that... Connor was alive in one, so his death must have been before that. Could he have died in Universe Zero? In the only universe where humanity survives, could Connor have died? I don't know. This also does need to be building up the St. Fire Church as one of our, our, like, one of the next enemies, along with, along with the Eden's One, of course. Um, and, and a role similar to, like, to, like, the, the Nero Empire back in the Aoi War. And, you know... Calling back to the series' best arc, or calling back to the style of the series' best arc, I will not complain about. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what's going on with all this. They killed Connor. What? And Rachel goes on, There's a group in the St. Fire Church called the Fanatics, and they weren't happy that you had relations with the next founder, so they... Uh, and, and Connor does the same, the same little gesture that he and Rebecca did in the previous chapter. No, no, no. I'd still be alive. Uh, also, I'm looking at the word founder again, um, and I, I, you know, just was a little bit critical of like, oh, that sounds like a retcon, but given the fact that all the founders have the ability to turn back time, I could see the way that like, the idea that they could be the original founder due to that time power could get, could become a part of the, the faith's beliefs. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but it feels like it could make sense in my head. I don't know. Uh, and Rebecca, Rebecca, um, Rebecca knows. Rebecca has done this before. You turn back time? That's right. Connor was killed in a different world. I kept going back again and again until I found a world where Connor didn't die. In that world, I went back to the church voluntarily, without a word to him. Uh, so yeah. She, the reason she left was because there was, to her, no other way. It was just her. Maybe there could have been. Maybe she wasn't, like, the fact that Connor didn't seem to know this implies she could have, like, been more open, more honest with him. But the fact remains that she didn't. Um, and so the only thing she could see was to go back. Uh, and Rachel, Rebecca and Connor both sort of take that in as Rachel goes on. After that, they kept me under house arrest. Then... When Rebecca was, was about four years old, the fanatics turned on her. They said they couldn't accept a girl with an unknown pedigree. Um, we have to see the fanatics. They're all bald. They all have this sort of, sort of timepiece mask. Like, it, it feels like it's meant to be a time motif, though it doesn't really look like any clock I've ever seen uh, for their masks. Uh, they, they look like a religious cult. Let's be honest here. Uh, and Rebecca questions, did I die too? And we see Rachel just looks away in shame before, you know, with tears forming, tells her, I don't even know how many times I had to watch my daughter die. I tried to find a world where you survived and we lived together. I tried hundreds, thousands of times to find somewhere, but I couldn't. This power can only do so much. And I realized that I didn't have the power, didn't have the ability to turn back time no more. As a last result, last resort, I sent my daughter far away to the cosmos where the cherry blossoms dance. And everyone is just sort of, you know, happy Connor and sister all just, just can only listen, you know, rapt attention to Rachel's story. I'm so sorry. And Rebecca, you know, gives her that face of determination 
And then tries to laugh it off. Though it definitely feels like she's trying to make a joke to, like, break the tension. You could have at least given me enough money to live off of for the rest of my life. Uh, and Rachel tells her, I was sure that's what I did. I found a few be believers I trusted. I gave them money and I sent them with you. But I get it. I was naive. I guess they took the money and ran. Okay. Uh, she, she tried her best. She just fucked up, you know. It's like, like, I don't know. I We all sort of assumed Rachel was just, you know, because she was part of the Galactica, because she was seemingly some kind of, you know, head of a mysterious organization, I at least thought she'd be a, a bad mother. But we see she's tried, she tried every single thing she could. And this was the best she had in her. It's kind of, it, it's sad, really. The Church of St. Fire started scaling back after that. Eventually, they forgot all about their cockamamie traditions. Um, okay. That's kind of quick to forget about their traditions. Um, like, it's only been, what? Like, if Rebecca was four, I think she's around 20 now, right? Because I, 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 I assume she was 17 at the start of the series, and so I figure she's 20. Only in, like, 16 years, this church that had so much power, their leader was a Galactica... Uh, or even while she was becoming a Galactica, they were also being... The church was forgetting its own past in less than a generation. Like, you know, that's all, that was always one of the things that sort of bothered me about the way the Star Wars prequels connect to the original trilogy, that the Jedi are so forgotten in the originals, when it's been less than 20 years since they fell. And, like, like Star Wars can make that barely work with, like, you know, the fact that the Jedi were already seen as kind of fanciful and rarely seen at least before the war and the you know direct suppression on those traditions that the empire put on but there's not there's nothing like that for saint fire as far as we can tell so i don't know i'm a little suspicious uh maybe maybe there's more to it maybe those fanatics are still around they will end up being a threat as we head to yukino um i don't know but sister gets to the point. So how did you get to be one of the Erosion Seis Galactica? It was my mother that they called that. Rebecca's grandmother. Her powers were really something. Everybody everywhere was afraid of her. Knox is a title that's given to all the church founders. The name took on a life of its own, and by my generation it struck fear into hearts all over the cosmoses. Okay. Uh, so that would explain... So it's not the, So I guess that makes it a little bit more believable... Uh, the whole thing with, um, or like, like what I was saying earlier about R Rachel becoming a Galactica while the church was shrinking didn't make any sense. And she wasn't. She just sort of got sort of grandfathered into the name by her mother. Uh, though the line about by my generation, it struck fear into hearts. Like that's the next generation. That's not that huge. That's not the sort of thing you would say by my generation about. I don't know. Um... And Connor questions, the church came to find you because my mother had passed away. Yeah. And Rebecca is sort of taking all of this in. You know, it, it's a lot to take for her. I'm so sorry I left you all alone, Rebecca. And Rebecca just turns, uh, turns on her heels. Happy calls out to her, Rebecca, I'm going to get dressed. Yeah, she should have done that a while ago. She's been like in a towel this whole chapter. I was fine. Oh, I see that next panel. Happy was with me through it all. I never felt lonely at all. We see she's like hiding her face from her family, but we can already see the tears fall. I still have some mixed feelings to work through. But for now, I'm just glad I got some answers. And I'm glad I got to meet you. She actually, I thought those would have been tears, but she's not, she's not crying from what we can see. She's holding it back for now. But I do like the panel of, of her facing forward as like, Connor and Rachel, like, watch her back. It's a, it's a, there's a sweet little, little moment here. And Rachel and Connor both sort of look after her. And Rachel tells her, Rebecca, if there's one thing I want you to know, it's this. Not a single day went by that I didn't think of you. And we see Rachel starts to cry here. I've always loved you. And Rebecca turns back, you know, can't hold herself anymore, and gives them both a hug. Mom! Dad! And she finally lets it all out. Uh, Connor and Rachel also tearing up as they, they at long last get to hold their daughter. 
Uh, and we see Sister give this little grin and Happy, like, quietly wiping a tear from his eyes as the chapter ends. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna talk about this chapter. I'm thinking I'm gonna try to talk about both chapters together here. Uh, though I did really like this chapter, even for my, my questions about how exactly the, the whole, the whole shrinking of the St. Fire Church was a little weird to me. Um, but it's just sweet. It's a sweet little backstory. Mashima, I think by and large, Mashima's, um, has, he hasn't gone for the backstory well, uh, in this series to the extent he did in Fairy Tale. And it's something that was always very good in Fairy Tale. Uh, and so this is much more in line with an Eden Zero backstory. It's sort of, it's not very long. It's not really told as a long flashback. It's largely just Rachel talking. Um, but it still is, it, it's still a sweet Mashima flashback. Um, and it's just good, you know, for all of, all of Rebecca's loneliness all those years, she's finally found, she, she had, she had found her, like, a found family, but she's also found her parents at last, and they never, like, wanted to abandon her. There was no hatred for her. There's just love here. And that's nice. Now, with all that said, let's dive right into 219, The Final World. Which, uh, don't know what that's gonna end up being about. Probably something completely different, is my best guess. Tying into wherever the story is going next, towards that final battle that Xiao Mei referred to a while back. Uh, or not, not a while back, like three chapters ago. Uh, but our picture here is, um, we have, wa we have Wise and Sister in these kind of, like, old western get-up. Sister, of course, much more scantily clad than Wise. It, it is what it is. Chapter 219, The Final World. And we open on the Eden Zero sometime after that whole conversation. Uh, as Rebecca is now getting, like, smothered by her parents. Uh, t and it looks like it's about time for her to have her long-delayed, like, teen rebellion phase. We see the orphan trio. Our, they're the, the three orphans of the main quartet. Just, like, being stunned. And, like, Rebecca now having parents. It's a little mean, honestly. <laughs> like... Oh, now someone finally gets parents. Uh, it's not these three. Uh, but, but Rebecca tells her parents, So, um, do you think you could stop hanging all over me? Uh, and Connor tells her, But lass, it were 18 years since we were a family. Uh, and Rachel agrees, We're just so happy to be with our little girl. Yeah, but... Connor. Connor brings up this, like... Uh, an erotic visual novel, I think? Come now, play a video game with your dear old dad. That's not a game to play with your parents. Uh, and, and Rachel, come take a bath with me, ducky. I just had a bath. They're definitely, like, Rachel, Rachel gets much better here than Connor does, because Connor still has the weird, the weird horny aspect. Um to his character that really I wish would have been, would have been cut out once he learned that who his daughter was. Um, like that, that panel of the, the arrow gay is just bad. I don't like it. Anyway, one last flashback of, of both of them telling Rebecca, you can sleep with mommy and daddy tonight. Ew, no. Um, and... Oh, they're just gonna go at it as as in this flashback, Connor and Rebecca are like Connor and Rachel are looking in each other's eyes. It just brings back so many memories. Yeah, it sure does. And they just instantly hit to the ground like hit the ground making out. Rachel, sweetie, and Re Rebecca yells at them, not in front of the children. Uh and Rebecca tells them, everyone on the crew here has lost their parents. And what's worse, on Lendar, they were forced to see the, the horrible things that happened to their mothers. Could you be grown-ups and show a little consideration, please? So Rebecca's at least trying to be nice. Uh, and Connor and, and Rachel both get kind of dejected at that. But the other three are sort of okay with it, actually. Uh, as Wise notes, nah, it doesn't bother me. And Homer, uh, indeed, I find it heartwarming. And Shiki just grins, family's so great. Uh, and Happy, Happy and Pino note, anyway, Rebecca's mom really looks just like her. That is what they call genetics. Uh, and Rachel adds on, it's just like looking at a younger version of me. Um, but, but Jean tells her, 
you look pretty young yourself. And Clean throws in uh, Rachel's little catchphrase, Ducky. Oh, nicely said. Uh, and she looks over at Laguna. There sure are a lot of a lot of lookers among Rebecca's friends. And Laguna just like glares at her. Um, you know, not really, not really interested in this whole where this conversation is going. Uh, as Rachel sort of teases Rebecca, which one of them is your boyfriend? What? Uh, and Rachel, Rachel goes on. No, let me guess. And Rebecca just snaps. You cut that out already. Like already, you know, all the warmth, all the warmth is sort of dissolving under under the the general vibe of a parent of a mother daughter dynamic. Um, which you know. I mean, it's nice that Rebecca finally gets to have her kind of teenage rebellion, given that she didn't really get to have that in her teenage years. Um, but anyway, uh, Hermit's sister and Moscow appear, and Hermit questions, So, what are you going to do now? Moscow! Moscow, he's just there. Uh, as sister picks up, if you want to stay on the ship, then... But Rachel tells everyone, I'm going to go back home for now. Which does shock everyone. You know, given that Connor is a member of the crew, I figured that Rachel would have stayed. Uh, but also, she's going back to Milt? Back to Saintfire? I don't know what's going to happen there. There might be, I mean, it might be she still has to deal, deal with the fanatics. If she if she stays here, then the fanatics will follow her. Will, will follow the Eden Zero. And she doesn't really want to deal with all that again. Uh, it's the same sort of, you know... It, it's not quite the same not telling anyone about her past that, like, led to the situation in the first place, but it does feel like a similar instinct to me. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if, if, like, Rebecca tries to talk her out of it or something. Uh, Connor is just shocked. What? And Shiki presses, but you're finally together again. Uh, and Sister presses, and you just told us your home is... Uh, and Hermit picks up, the planet melts, which... Here's the thing I noted la a little bit near the end of last chapter is time, Milts, and Mildian. You know, both both Milt and Mildian have ties to time. Mildian has the whole outside of time Jaume thing, uh, along with it being um, Seacart's home and Ravemaster, and uh, the place where where the god of where Demaria's god of time was worshipped in fairy tale. Um, so, you know, lots of time connection, and Milt has this time-worshipping cult of its own. So maybe there's a connection between the two. I feel like there might be a connection between the two. We'll see. Uh, and Wise presses, but you said Ziggy destroyed the place, right? And Rachel tells the crew, there were some survivors, and they're sure to be worried about me. Look, I said for now, remember? We can see each other again any time, once all the dust is settled. Um, and Connor presses, but besides, our reunion might be even more magical in the other world. Huh? Uh, what are you talking about? The way, is she, either she's dying, all of a sudden, in which, case, in which case, in which case, she should stay and let sister treat her. But it's the thing with, like, the eye, it's the same thing I note sometimes when, like, eyes are in shadow, the way the eyes are blocked there feels creepy. And Rebecca feels that sweat drop. The other world? That's right. All of you are about to go to a different world. Uh, what? And we see the ex Draken gang. <coughs> uh, Jean just question. Jean, Jean just gives a look of questioning. Clean pushes, why? And Laguna, what do you mean? I mean, that's our only hope now. I know this might come as a bit of a shock. But try and stay calm. Mother is dying. Okay. So that ends up tying into... It's not evil. It's not her, like, oh, I'm going to kill you for some, like, suicide cult thing. It's the same thing that, that caused Ziggy to go back in time in the first place. It's, you know, the disappearance of humanity. It happened in... in uh, whatever universe, it wasn't universe two by that point, it was some other, I forget what the number was, uh, what caused humanity to die out 20,000 years before, it's still happening. Mother is still dying. Um, and so, the uh, but there's, like, what does she mean by the other world? Is she going to take them to some other world? I don't know. Uh, but everyone is just, 
just stunned to hear all that. Uh, Shiki doesn't, none of them seem, none of the people who heard Ziggy's whole backstory, they, like, there's no special focus on them having a bit more knowledge of this than the others, Shiki and Herman and sister. Um, but everyone is just stunned to hear it. Mother's life force is running out. And when it does, the whole human race and all the cosmoses will go extinct. Not too far in the future. It'll be lights out for this world. Um, okay. I'm going to bring up the human race thing again because I was never quite settled with that in the Aoi saga. Uh, the whole, like, does human race include, is that just a way of saying all organic life? Like, are the aliens we've met also counted as human? I, I, I presume so at this point. Mm. Like, I would say it's been a while since we had any aliens show up. Has Mashima forgotten about the aliens? <laughs> um, but, like, he was bringing that up during the Aoi War when, like, Lazar was around. Uh, and, and Goodwin and Ibaraki and all those other, like, actual aliens were still being included there. It's still a weird thing that I never quite really... And I've never really thought was the right move for Mashima. But whatever. It is what it is at this point. Not too far in the future. It'll be lights out for this world. Uh, and Rebecca questions the world is ending, and Shiki's more focused on something else. You know things about Mother? Of course I know about her. In the Church of Saint Fire, we put all our faith in Mother. Uh, which I thought they said that it was time that the Saint Fires worshipped, right? That's what Sister said? Um, yeah, on, on page 9 of the previous chapter, the Church of Saint Fire, they put their faith in time, right? Though Rachel does say that's not quite right. Well, in a nutshell, sure, it ain't wrong to look at it that way. But there's, I guess that implies there's more to it, and that more to it is Mother. Which now I'm thinking, you know, time is tied up with Ethereon, via Rebecca being Ethereon. Um, but then there's also this, this cult that basically worships, worships time that is tied to Mother? Or that they all that really worships mother. There's something going on with time, Ethereon, mother. They're all connected in a way, which also would go in in with what Ziggy said back at the start of the Lendard arc about about mother and the Chronophages being connected. Um, I don't know. There's a lot going on here with mother, and for all my issues with sort of how Lendard wrapped up, all of the mysteries at the heart of this series still sort of have me by the throat. Um, anyway, Rebecca is shocked to hear that we all put our faith in Mother. And Wise, Wise pushes back, you know, he, he had the same thought I had. Okay, hold up. Religions try and pull this garbage all the time. The world is coming to an end. If you join our church, you can avoid the disaster. Now come and join us. And, <laughs> and I guess that sounds old school to Rachel as she questions, Whoa, what decade did you come from? Uh, I'm from 50 years ago. <laughs> she got him She got him right on the head there. Um, but Rachel goes on, Look, I'm not proselytizing here. The mother of this world has already started losing her power. Of this world? Okay. That's an, does this other world have its own mother? Could that be where humanity went in Ziggy's future? I don't know. Uh, but Jean presses, so what? Why should her losing her power mean the world is over? Because Mother is our source of life. We believe that the human race was born from the great maternal being we call Mother. So a part of Mother flows through each and every one of us. If we lose Mother, then all humankind will inevitably die out. And happy questions, but why is Mother getting weaker? I don't know. But it's true. And it's true in every world I've visited. Every world you've visited? I can't even count how many times I've jumped through time to see what I could find. But it was always the same. In every single world, Mother dies. Every world but one. Universe Zero. Tying her goals in with Ziggy. The world of possibilities. Universe Zero. And we very explicitly get Shiki, Herman, and Pino, who know the most about Ziggy's backstory. Uh, not Sister, who was also there. Uh, and also, I'm not sure Pino was there for that point, but I think she would have worked it. Would have I imagine Shiki would have told her what Ziggy said uh, as like the origins of her creation. So yeah, now that ties 
you know, you know, everything Rachel is saying with what, like, the robot council of Ziggy's future said. That there is only one universe where Mother survives. And that's sort of the goal. But what does that mean for the people who are already in this universe? Because, like, it's not really... You know, looking at universe one, that Shiki is still dead. His memories ended up, like, flowing into Shiki at the end of his fight with Draken. But, like, he's still dead. So maybe, maybe Rachel and Rebecca can make it to that universe zero. <coughs> but what does that mean for everyone else? Do they, are they just kind of fucked? I don't know. There's a whole lot of, of possibilities, uh, to use Mashima's word here, that I can't really wait to... I, I want to see how the series explores. And Lobelia and Kashpo were here. I forgot they were here. Um, Lobelia shouts out, Wait a minute! None of this is making any sense to me. And Couchpo adds on, or me. Uh, and Hermit tells, tells the group, Universe Zero, according to Ziggy, is the only world where Mother survives. So, so to put it the other way, Mother dies in every other universe. Uh, yeah, getting the, quickly getting the crew up to, up to speed as to what Ziggy told Shiki. And Rachel tells them exactly. And I guess Connor at, only first started hearing about this whole universe thing last time when Rachel was telling him about his death. Yar. What be these universes again? In other words, parallel worlds. The results of a single choice fan out into countless possible worlds. When a number is assigned to one of the, when a number is assigned to one of these parallel worlds, we call it a universe. Uh, and Rachel tells the crew, but it ain't possible to observe the differences in these universes. Unless you have the power to travel through time, like Rebecca and me. Uh, and Rebecca, Rebecca questions, and you're telling me to go to Universe Zero? No. I'm telling all of you to go. And we see the entire, or like the main members of the crew, our main quartet and the surviving uh, Shining Stars, uh, in that, that fe it feels very important shot there, um all reacting to this notion they can all make it to Universe Zero, which does sort of throw out my little little suspicion that, like, would they all die? Would it just be Rebecca who survives? These these versions of them all don't make it. Um, but apparently not. Uh, and we also get a special focus on Wise and Homura and Clean and Laguna um, in their shock. And Rebecca questions, how? On this ship. That's what it's for, ain't it? And Shiki thinks back to what Ziggy told him. A ship to travel across space-time. The Eden Zero. Come and see me when you get to Universe Zero. I can show you the way to Mother. I don't know where she is, but I can still guide you. That's how it is in Universe Zero. You must find Mother. That will be the key to saving her. Alright, I have no idea what any of that part means. You don't know where, but you can... She doesn't know where, but she can guide them. And finding her is the key to saving her. Which means that in Universe Zero, her, her life is still in danger. Or will they find Mother in order to save her in the other universes? You know, to save the multiverse rather than just any one universe. I don't know. More questions. As everyone, Shiki, Rebecca, Wise and Homura, um, Happy, Pino, and Connor, Herman and Sister, the ex Draken gang... Even the, the more minor characters, Lobelia, Couchpo, and Moscow, all look at this, all face this mission with like a set, set, de, set face of determination uh, on them. But there's one thing you can never forget. Universe Zero is the world of possibilities. Once you all become observers of it, it has the potential to become whatever world each of you wants it to be. The potential. Universe Zero is in a regular world. And the starting point of everything. All the universes converge at zero. Okay. Not sure what that's, what that's about. Uh, Rebecca also does not know. So what does that mean? It means that once you get to zero, there's no turning back. <coughs> you and I will both lose our powers to travel through time. And of course, so will the Eden Zero. Universe Zero is the final world. Oh, there can't, like, there can't be a leaper. It, it's a way of removing that, you know, crutch from Rebecca for the final, for the final battle. The final saga, whatever we want to call it. And we end with this very sort of, you know, untouched landscape. 
and, you know, with a sky of shooting stars that ends our two chapters. Okay. So these chapters were very much like the exposition dump chapters. Uh, the fir- they're, they're both sort of Rachel telling the crew what all they need to know before we get to this final arc. And that is the history of the St. Fire Church. Um, and, and the whole thing with Universe Zero. That the only way to say Mother is, is in Universe Zero. And I think the first one on a character basis works a lot better as it's tied to this sort of... Uh, the, the emotional crux of Rebecca finally reuniting with her parents, uh, even if she had already reunited with her father several times, only now being aware that that, that, that is her father. Um, and so, it, like I said earlier, it makes it really, really sweet, the whole, the whole chapter. Mm. And even if that's the one where the backstory is a little bit less assured, it's a, a little less... You know, neither of them, neither of them quite makes sense, I guess. But 219 feels deliberate in a way where all of the things that don't seem to make sense that Rachel says, it feels like it will make sense once we get to Universe Zero. Once we see this world of possibilities. This, the, the, you know, the, the danger of, what is it she says, uh, the potential to become whatever world each of you wants it to be, which can be a kind... I feel like it can, it can be a kind of trap. Uh, they'll just get so lost in the fantasy they forget to live sort of story. Um, um, where is I going with that? Something about... Like, it feels like that won't... That doesn't make sense now, but it feels like it will... It will make sense when we get to Universe Zero. All will, all will be unveiled in that final world. Uh, whereas the things about 218 that don't make sense, the things about... You know, St. Fire was so powerful, and over the course of, like, you know, maybe 16, 17 years, it got, it shrunk down to the fact that the traditions of, like, 17 years ago are already forgotten is a little weird to me. Um, like, I'm not quite sure that that makes sense. It might not matter. We'll see when we get to Milt, because we will have to deal with St. Fire uh, if, if the gang goes to see Rachel at Milt. If the fanatics are still there in Universe Zero, that will cause some problems. Um, but here's a question. Can the Edens 1 make it to Eden Zero? Because they're definitely going to have to deal with the 1 at some point. Uh, not, not make it to Eden Zero. Can it make it to Universe Zero? Because they have to deal with the 1 at some point. Uh, like, that was the build-up of Lendard. And I know one of the big problems of Lendard was building things up and then never doing anything with it. But I don't think that, Eden, that the Edens 1 will just be forgotten as they go to the final world. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I, I think Lendard had a lot of problems, had a lot of, like, I'm, I'm looking at this as the crux, as the sort of the, the, the corner the series is turning from Lendard into this next saga. Uh, and as Lendard, like, Lendard had its problems, um, especially as it went on and all of these interesting things got brought up. And while they're the, while, like I said, the dealing with them was satisfactory to some point, it also felt kind of, you know, all taken all together, it felt kind of rushed. Uh, as we, as I think everyone kind of noted, I may be nicer to it than a lot of people are, but I, I, it was still kind of rushed. Uh, but all of the things we were learning about this St. Fire Church, uh, and especially Universe Zero and this final attempt to get there. We don't even know how to get there yet. How getting there is different from, like, time travel. Because only Rebecca can time travel. It, she can't, with her time travel, take everyone to Universe Zero. Though that was the ship's function initially. So it probably is part of Ethereon or something in there. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Rebecca will have to, like, give her power to Ethereon or something to get them to Universe Zero. But when we get there, however soon that is, um, we'll be moving, we'll, all, all the stuff we're learning about it seems like it could be really exciting. And I, and, you know, I think Mashima is really good at setup. I think, you know, to be, to, I, I like his work, obviously. I've been reading his work, I've been reviewing his work for like six or seven years now. Um, but I can, I can admit he sometimes doesn't quite get the follow through. But we're in the setup days now, and this is some really fun setup, and I can't wait to see how all of the setup ends up playing ends up paying off. 
So with that said, I'm gonna leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe, or you know, do whatever makes it happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye.